I'd like to thank everyone for attending Masterpiece at Midday today. It is my pleasure to introduce our curator, Brittany Corrales. She'll be talking about um, some of the prints uh, that we have on display in our Art in Focus Gallery net right now with some of them, um, not all on display, so a little bit of a behind the scenes peek at one of the portfolios um, in, the, in the museum's collection. Um, thanks everyone for joining us again, and I will turn it over to you, Brittany. Thanks, Andrea. And um, can everyone see my screen? Thumbs up if we can all see perfect. Well, thanks everyone for spending time with us today during your lunch hour. Uh, if this is your first time attending Masterpieces at Midday, I want to emphasize that it's very informal. So please feel free to eat your lunch, have a cup of coffee, uh, and don't hesitate to jump in at any point with a question, uh, type comments in the chat as we go, and we'll also save time at the end for questions and discussion. Um, so for those of you who I have not had the pleasure of meeting, my name is Brittany Corrales, and I'm a curator at the ASU Art Museum, where I have been working since 2016. And one of my major responsibilities and joys of my job is to manage our collection of over 6,000 works on paper in our print study room. Uh, if you have not been to the print study room, I highly encourage you to plan a visit. It's a very special place. You can make a private appointment uh, to view artwork up close, uh, and you can do this by calling the museum or emailing me, and I'll ask Andrea to leave my contact info in the chat when she gets a moment. Uh, it's a really uh, unique opportunity that I hope you all take advantage of. Um, and shortly after I started working at the museum, I stumbled upon the 10 women, 10 prints portfolio in the collection. And I've always wanted to find an opportunity to include it in an exhibition um, or for closer study. So this past year, I curated a small exhibition called Art in Focus, highlighting women artists in the collection, and was able to incorporate several of the prints from this portfolio into the show. And then when I was asked to give a masterpieces talk for March, which happens to be Women's History Month, I also thought it would be a perfect opportunity to dive deeper into this amazing portfolio. The 10 by 10, 10 Women, 10 Prints Portfolio was published by the Berkeley Art Center in 1995, which is hard to believe is now over 25 years ago. Um, our museum also acquired the portfolio in 1995, the year it was made, which really shows how long the museum has had a commitment to collecting groundbreaking uh, prints that deal with social justice issues. Uh, this portfolio was created to commemorate International Women's Day and the 75th anniversary of the adoption of the 19th Amendment, which gave women the right to vote in the United States. And I will say that gave white women the right to vote in the United States because many Black women faced impediments to voting until the passage of the 1965 Civil Rights Act. Um, so in fact, last August was the 100th anniversary of the adoption of the 19th Amendment. And of course, women are still fighting for rights to this day. Um, one of the reasons I love this portfolio is that to me, it feels very contemporary and relevant in its themes, its subject matter, and its styles. Uh, I often consider printmaking to be a visual medium that's really similar to internet meme culture. Um, it's an efficient way to spread information in a really visually striking way. So this is an energetic portfolio. It's 10 colorful prints by 10 contemporary women artists coming from diverse racial, ethnic, social backgrounds. And many of these women have become activists. They've worked for civil and human rights and the protection of children, as well as for personal freedom for women in the workplace, uh, in public life, in artistic expression, and really in the most intimate areas of their private lives. And what's unique is that each voice is separate and distinct. 
in these 10 prints, but each explores a different area of women's experience that have implications for all of us. Um, I'll also say that the portfolio was printed by Joss Sanses, who's a founder of Alliance Graphics, which has long supported social justice organizations in the Bay Area. Uh, so here are our 10 artists from the 10 Women, 10 Prints portfolio. And I also want to make sure to acknowledge the curator of this portfolio, um, Robin Henderson. And she was inspired by her grandmother, who really symbolizes the spirit of this project for her. She said that um, in 1995, the dilemmas that her grandmother faced in the 20s, such as the lack of affordable and competent childcare for wage earning mothers, or the difficulty of balancing dem demands of job and motherhood, uh, reproductive freedom, unfair employment practices, un unequal pay, these are all still struggles for American women. And this was in 1995 that she wrote this, which is unbelievably 25, 26 years ago now. So um, I just wanna acknowledge the, the vision of the curator of this portfolio before we dive in. So I'd like to briefly touch on each of these 10 artists and their contribution to this portfolio. Uh, of course, we're just scratching the surface today but I think it's rewarding to consider them not only as individual works, but as a whole uh, with common themes and visual references that uh, really work together um, to form a cohesive portfolio. Uh, and before I start, you'll notice that it says 30 colors on the slide. Now, typically I wouldn't include information like this in a presentation but I wanted to today emphasize the process behind these prints so that we're not just looking at digital Im images, but that we're reminded of uh, the screen printing process, the fact that these artists are working with colors and inks, um, so that it's just a, a reminder every time you see that information of, of the process that goes into making these prints. So starting with Mary Lovelace O'Neill, this piece is called Dark Days in the Abundant Blue Light of Paris. Uh, and the print was created while she was undergoing a printmaking residency in Paris. And it evokes vibrant blue tones that represent the cold winter that she spent in Paris. And in the center are two corset-like objects that are, seem to be suspended in space. Um, they, they sort of float like ghosts haunting the scene, um, which again, Paris is the capital of fashion um, in the Western imagination. So she's making reference to that as well. Uh, but she's really also challenging the Western garment such as the corset. And with this challenge comes the implications of the social history of women's oppression uh, in the form of apparel and what was considered appropriate for women in their daily lives. Uh, here is an image of the artist herself. O'Neill works with a variety of mediums and often employs personal narratives that speak to issues around racism in society and social justice and activism. And it's interesting to note that in 1985, she was the first African-American woman to be awarded tenure in Berkeley's Department of Art Practice. Next, we have a screen print by Yolanda Lopez. And um, here, Lopez really emphasizes the resilience of working class Latina women. This print honors Dolores Huerta, the American uh, labor leader and civil rights activist who co-founded the National Farm Workers Association, which later became the United Farm Workers. So the print itself is a combination of two images that speaks to the rights of not only women, but labor workers as well. You see in the upper left corner, the first photograph um, is depicting Dolores Huerta, the woman, uh, as we said, who co-founded this labor movement with Cesar Chavez. And in the second photograph, um, well, in the first photograph as well, I wanna point out she's, it's a little bit cut off at the top, but she's, holding a sign over her head that reads Welga, 
which means strike in Spanish. Um, and that the, the larger image in the foreground and to the right is a photograph of a group of women laborers on a California broccoli farm uh, and contemporary to the time, so contemporary to 1995. Um, so both of these images are really working together um, to address um, a moment of encouragement for, for Latino women to fight for their rights. Um, here on the left, you can see the original photograph of Dolores Huerta um, with the Welka sign. And here is Yolanda M. Lopez on the right. Um, and, and her work really aims to address these social issues, particularly stereotypes that exist for uh, Chicana, for Mexican, for Latinx women, and uses a variety of media to convey her message. Next, we have a print by Kim Ano, and it's called Eve, which um, it employs almost a pitch black foreground with colorful spheres that appear to be sort of suspended in space. Um, her work is really an abstraction of color. So it leads to many different interpretations as to what the shapes might represent. Um, some have speculated that these shapes hold the form of an eye. Um, you, you might be able to see that in the images um, that represent a constant gaze that women are subjected to. Uh, the print really retains a, a painterly quality. Uh, there's distinct but continuous shifts of color, um, nebulous areas in, in the print, um, really blurring the boundaries. Um, and Kim Ano is, here's an image of her here. She's originally from Los Angeles um, and she's not only a printmaker, but a painter, a photographer. She also works in video. Um, and a lot of her work deals with uh, the environment, with climate change um, uh, and issues of gender. Next, we have a print by Juana Alicia. It's um, calls to attention the relationship between women and nature. And pictured are two hands outstretched on a bed of stones with vibrant colors um, that spill onto the plants that are rooted in the landscape. And uh, the hands are adorned with two rings and a bracelet. Uh, the bracelet has been speculated to be the third eye. You can see the eye within the bracelet here. And uh, there's really uh, an energy to this print um, that represents the relationship between women and the natural world. Um, the positioning of her hands almost appears as if she's climbing upward and her muscles are tensed. Um, so it, it's sort of um, representing a struggle, perhaps a struggle that women face every day uh, in their environments. Here is an image of the artist. She is a muralist uh, as well as a printmaker. She has a passion for social justice and human rights. Um, and she is also an educator that's a member of the full-time faculty at Berkeley City College. Uh, She's also uh, described her process as no matter whether the work is solo or collaborative, it gives me joy to contribute to the urban environments in an effort to humanize our public spaces. Um, so she's also very much involved with public art as well and always employing really striking, vibrant color palettes. So next, this is a print by Mildred Howard, which uh, really, challenges the female experience and comments on the matter in which the female body, in particular, the black female body is represented. Um, you can see this very uh, gauzy, floaty white bra, which is dainty and feminine with uh, soft floral embroidery and embellishments, which is in complete uh, juxtaposition to the image on the bottom of the print, which is uh, an egg carton um, that's really boxy uh, and um, hard edged uh, and weathered. And this print, um, while at first glance might appear sort of um, whimsical, uh, she actually created this print two years after the death of her son in a car accident. 
And the work really speaks to an emptiness after the loss of a child. Um, at the egg box might be uh, a reference to a woman's for, for fertility as well as her role as a mother. Uh, and Howard, this is uh, Mildred Howard here, is an artist that focuses on ideas of gender, body representation, um, and equality in her work, um, particularly through the lens of uh, the Black experience. Next, we have a print by Faith Ringgold. This is called Joe Baker's Birthday, and it's based on a quilt. So this is a print that is based on a quilt that she made that tells the story of Josephine Baker, who was an American artist. She was a civil rights activist and she lived in France working as an entertainer. And in this piece, Baker is represented reclining on a bed surrounded by fruit and flowers. And this is a specific reference to two Matisse paintings. Um, you can see them on the left here, the Odalisque with Magnolias and the dinner table from 1924 and 1908. So what Baker has done, um, sorry, what Ringgold has done uh, is placed Baker in, in the primary, as the primary figure in the piece. She appears self-confident and uh, really claims the bed as a symbol of women's empowerment. Um, so rather than showing a reclining white woman, she's sort of flipped the script um, to place a black woman at the center of the story, um, really challenging the history of art and reshaping the history to um, question the absence of black women um, within the traditional art historical canon. Um, this is Faith Ringgold here. Uh, she's a very well-known artist who focuses on the experience of black women within the field of art history and their absence of their work in museums. Um, we, uh, we actually have another masterpieces at midday that talked all about Faith Ringgold and this piece that you can find on our YouTube page if you'd like to learn more about her work um, and about that piece in particular. Uh, she's also said that, so she primarily works in quilts. You can see behind her is one of her quilts and the print is based on a quilt. And regarding her choice of the quilt as a medium, she said that feminist art is soft art, lightweight art, sewing art, women's art is less rigid and it's open to all kinds of new innovations. So she's really reclaimed the style of textile work while contributing to this broader theme of social justice and activism. Next, we have this print, uh, Misfortune by Hang Lu. In this screen print, she pictures um, an altered, manipulated photograph from the early, 20th, the early 20th century of a child prostitute. So you'll see that the young girls wear Western attire, um, mainly to appeal to a Euro-American clientele, um, but she's manipulated the one image to, to appear as if they're twins. Um, you'll also see that uh, there are hand-drawn fortune cookies at the bottom. Um, and the universal symbol for no covers the middle cookie. Um, the significance of the fortune cookies, um, there, there are many meanings to this, but they may allude to the promise of freedom and financial success that drew Chinese immigrants to the United States um, around the time of the gold rush. Um, and many Chinese immigrants, particularly women, were met with overwhelming discrimination and challenges women were forced into sex work um, and the fortune cookies might also represent the very misconstrued American notions of Chinese culture uh, and the struggles and sexualization that Chinese immigrant women underwent. This is the artist here, Hang Lu. Um, she immigrated to the US in 1984 after being accepted into UC San Diego. Um, she Initially, the Chinese government forbade her from leaving uh, as she was a highly trained, top tier uh, realist painter. Um, but once here in the US, she began to use her training with a much more expressive intent for social justice. Next, we have this print by Ruth Morgan. 
uh, Persenda. And this is one from a series that Morgan created to represent homeless children in New York City. Uh, specifically, this print represents a young girl named Persenda in a classroom setting. There's a blackboard behind her. Uh, it looks like there's a grammar lesson on the board and her back is toward the blackboard. Her gaze is directly unflinchingly facing the viewer. And she's almost confrontational with her gaze and her posture. Um, her arms are crossed in front of her, um, but there's also an aura of sadness and seriousness to the piece. Um, the piece really comes into, uh, into the realm of um, questioning institutional racism, the issue of homelessness in New York City, and particularly the struggles of young Black women. Um, this is the artist here. I apologize, this is the best photo I could find of her. Um, but she was born in New York City and depicts a wide range of social issues, including homelessness, imprisonment, um, and the failures of the state to protect at-risk youth and uh, marginalized groups in society. Next, we have uh, Carrie Mae Weems. And this piece is called Untitled, Trees with Mattress Springs, and is part of a series called the Sea Island series. Um, the series depicts Weems' experience photographing the islands off the coast of Georgia and South Carolina. Uh, these areas are home to the Gullah people. You might recognize the name Gullah from the children's television show Gullah Gullah Island, which is based on these islands. Uh, and the Sela Islands were the last place in the United States where slavery was practiced. Uh, one of the results of her visit here was this haunting photograph. And the, the piece represents a spirit catcher it's a little bit difficult to see and purposely so, but you can see that there's a, a box spring or mattress spring that is suspended in the tree in the center of the image. Um, the spirit catcher is an African practice that's used to ward off spirits. Um, and it also points to a woman's domestic space. Um, so there are many layers of meanings within this work. Uh, Carrie Mae Weems, this is the artist here, often explores issues of sexism, class, and identity in her work. Um, she's also a recipient, recipient of many awards, including the MacArthur Genius Grant, um, but specifically uses photography as her medium to explore the power of storytelling. And lastly, we have this print by Claudia Bernardi, which is called Ser Mujer es Saber Resistir, which means uh, to be a woman is to know how to resist. Um, this print is a direct reflection of the artist's experience in Argentina when she was working with uh, their forensic anthropology team at a site in Ethiopia. And um, you can see it features her distinctive layers of color um, and imagery such as human figures, skeletons, clothes, and furniture. These suggest the remnants of human life found at an archeological dig or mass burial site. Um, so it is quite somber imagery. And the title is a reminder that is really solemn and resolute. Um, but there is also a, a vibrancy to this print, to the colors that she uses while while also um, speaking to the advocacy for human life that she strives for in her work. Um, this is the artist here. As I said, she's in, um, from Argentina. She works in printmaking, but other mediums as well, and really focuses on um, social justice and advocacy in all aspects of her work. Overall, the 10 Women, 10 Prints portfolio is a wonderfully curated portfolio with really resonant themes. You can see there's repetition of body imagery with um, Juana Alicia's hands, uh, Mildred Howard's bra, and there's also several abstractionists uh, in the mix like Mary Lovelace O'Neill and Kim Anno. 
uh, which evokes spirituality and mystery. There's this relationship between photographer and subject that is represented in different ways from uh, Hung Lu's print to Ruth Morgan's print as they gaze at the camera in different ways. And then there are references to iconic women throughout history like Yolanda Lopez's celebration of Dolores Huerta and Faith Ringgold's homage to Josephine Baker. And before I close, I wanna remind you that a portion of this portfolio is on display now in the Art and Focus Gallery. These four prints are hanging on the walls in the gallery. So you are welcome to come and visit them. Uh, as well as if you'd like to make an appointment with me to see the rest of the portfolio, we are happy to make that happen for you. I also want to include that this portfolio is in the permanent collections of these museums as well, uh, including many others. Um, and I also want to make sure to thank Gabriella McCollum, my print room assistant, for her research assistance before I close. So I'd like to thank you all for joining us today. Please feel free to turn your screens or cameras on, ask any questions. I see there are some comments in the chat here that I haven't paid attention to, but I will close it here. Thank you so much, Andrea. Thank you so much, Brittany. I was just wondering, um, I mean, I know I have the privilege of walking a couple steps. Could you let us know what is the size of all the prints in, these, in this portfolio? Yes, um, I think a good way to illustrate this is, I'm just gonna go through my slides here. Uh, I'll start at the beginning. So technically they're 23 inches by 23 inches. They're square shaped. So even though some of the images are not a square, the pieces of paper themselves are square. Um, and you can see in this image, their size in the gallery. Thank you so much, Brittany. If anyone has a question, feel free to either ask in the chat um, or again, unmute yourself and ask directly. I don't know exactly how to phrase this, but I wanted to ask, since we have such amazing artists here in this portfolio, are we looking to continue collecting some of these artists like Faith Ringgold? I, she's amazing, I've seen some of her work. Are we continuing to collect some of these artists? Are we continuing to think about, are there other portfolios similar to this that we want to bring more of this female activism into our collection? Yeah, those are all great questions, DM. Um, we actually do have work in the collection by many of these artists. We have other works by the artists. I would love to create, uh, to acquire more work by Faith Ringgold in particular. Um, that's on our wish list, um, but certainly, the print room's mission has always been to collect social and political work. And a lot of times that includes portfolios like this. So we have several similar collections of portfolios in the print room. Uh, we actually just acquired a new portfolio this past year, as you remember the Trump 2.0 portfolio that deals with social justice, justice issues and um, issues of discrimination and politics. And so um, yes, absolutely. We have a lot of context we could do an entire exhibition on portfolios, um, but it's also just a great learning tool for printmaking students, for art students, to be able to see the different types of printmaking techniques and, and see them all as a group together. It's a wide, wide range of styles and techniques. All right, I'm not seeing that we have any other questions in the chat. Um, I wanna thank you all so much for joining us. Our next program will be on April 1st. We'll actually be looking um, at another woman, just a single woman artist from our Ceramics Research Center. The work is called Bad Manners. It's a, comprised of over 300 individual pieces. And I have the pleasure of interviewing all of our behind the scenes staff um, to kind of glean more um, from them about the process of what it's what it takes to put this one particular artwork 
out on display. It's very impressive. I can't wait um, to share all that all with you. So again, that will be April 1st. Um, but right now, um, we thank you so much for attending and I hope you have a great rest of your day and I hope to see you on April 1st. Thank you everyone.